So hello everyone, here we are again, uh, you, me, and search for a nonviolent future. We're on page 55. Uh, you know, when I was teaching nonviolence at the University of California at Berkeley, or uh, all of my friends in the movement have had the same experience. People used to say, well, I really like this idea, but, and then they'd have one or of two objections every time. They would either say, it's not human nature, or they would say, I read history. So I know that human beings do nothing but fight each other. So that was then. Now I'm happy to say both of these fields are changing. We'll be talking from time to time, we've already started talking about some of the changes in science, which are really quite spectacular. There are changes in the discovery of history, which are not as spectacular perhaps. But then as we begin to get the ability to recognize nonviolent episodes when we see them, they become part of the media. Uh, today it's mostly in the, only in the alternative media, but it's slowly feeding into the stream that becomes the news, which goes on to become the history. So even if you cannot find nonviolence in history, you can go out and learn it from your own experiences uh, and from alternative sources. But it's good to know that this problem has been with us for quite a while. In 1909, in his famous manifesto, Hind Swaraj, or Indian Home Rule, which incidentally a friend of ours in India today is using to convert people to Gandhian nonviolence in Jammu and Kashmir, so having a tremendous potential impact on the tension between India and Pakistan, and therefore on the whole world. So it shows you how influential this document is, and I recommend it for everyone. In Swaraj or Indian Home Rule. Gandhi wrote it in one go on board ship, heading back from London to uh, India. Uh, one of the things he has to address right away is this problem, and he says the fact that there are so many men still alive in the world, and women I might add, shows that it, the world, is based not on the force of arms, but on the force of truth or love. Remember last time we were talking about the two forces? Most of human interaction is, va is based on the force that we're now calling nonviolence. Yetzir Tov, or the good urge, or what St. Augustine called the city of God, the awareness of a higher vision in which we are all one. Little quarrels of millions of families in their daily lives disappear before the exercise of this force. And he goes on to say when you have a quarrel, let's say between two brothers and they make up, it's not news. Nothing happened. Because we're, we're not calibrated to see that something really wonderful happened, something that we can build into uh, a whole institution. So uh, this has also been recognized in other fields. For example, on page uh, 56 on the bottom, there's a very interesting quote from uh, someone who we've interviewed now a couple of times, and a primatologist by the name of Franz Dewal, who, and it would be fascinating to know how this happened in him. He was watching a group of chimpanzees as a scientist. They were having a quarrel, which is not uncommon among chimpanzees, just as it is not uncommon among certain other uh, two-legged primates. And uh, then they stopped. They stopped quarreling. They started grooming each other. They reestablished their pecking order, hierarchy. And Dual is watching all of this, and he said, you, you know, that's interesting. Fires start, and then fires go out. Now think of it in terms of what Gandhi just said. If there were, a fire started, and nothing would ever put it out, the world would have burned to an ash a long time ago. If there were no way of stopping quarrels, we would not be here. So needless to say, it would be extremely useful to know how, quote, fires stop, how quarrels uh, are ended. And Duwal noted this uh, right away, and he said, hmm, you know, this is interesting. And like a good scientist, he said, I'll go and look up the literature uh, on reconciliation. And guess what he found? 
Yeah, I'm waiting for you to guess, and, and you're right. You found absolutely nothing. Shelves and shelves on how chimpanzees fight or any other species fights, but at that point in time, absolutely nothing about how they stop fighting. And I myself had once seen a film of chimpanzees fighting, and the narrator said the animals are angry, they are fighting each other. A few minutes later, as it happened, they were uh, grooming and they were not fighting anymore. And the narrator said, they are exhibiting affectionate behavior. In other words, anger is real, affection is not in our worldview. So this is what we see and nonviolence is what we don't see. So Duval, uh, among others, has played a really significant role in refocusing science. And we can no longer say with the backing of science that uh, nonviolence is not human nature. The best with the most accurate thing we can say is that in our nature, we are capable of both violence and nonviolence. Which one gets expressed is a matter of nurture, not nature. It's what images we've been exposed to and we have a lot to say about that and what ideas we have in our mind and what circumstances we find ourselves in and we thrust ourselves into. So uh, the same is true uh, for history and for science, that fortunately we live in a period now where both of these two tremendous fields are changing to the extent that nonviolence is being recognized as a reality. And at the same time, we're becoming aware that human beings exist in a field of forces. They are not just physical objects. We are acted upon mentally, spiritually, emotionally by ambient forces. Knowing all this and knowing that ultimately there are two such forces on the human level, violence and nonviolence, enables us to understand much more easily what's going on in our own life and the lives of those around us. So, more of the same next time we speak. Thanks very much.